Amen. If you feel all right, you ought to give God praise. Come on, stand on your feet and give him praise. Stand on your feet if you can and give God praise. You ought to feel all right. You made it one more time. Made it through another night. God lets you see the light of day one more time. You open your eyes and saw light one more time. Hallelujah. Not only did you see light, you were able to move your limbs. Amen. Swing your legs to the side of the bed as, as we often do over 15. Get ourselves together. Hallelujah. And then stand on our feet and then prepare ourselves for the day. God has been good to us. We live to see yet another Sunday, another Lord's Day. Amen. This first Sunday of October. Hallelujah. We thank God for the seasons of change in, in our lives and the seasons of change that we experience here in this earth. We thank God for allowing us to see another fall season. Hallelujah. Don't stop praising it. Because if you don't think that he's worthy to be praised, you ought to just kind of just sit on down if you can. But if you know that you know that you know that the God you serve has kept you one more time, you ought to lift your voice. You ought to stop your feet. You ought to clap your hands. You ought to throw your head back and shout hallelujah. Think back over your life and just think about how good God's been to you, how God has kept you even in this season of your life. Some of us are experiencing some challenges in life, but God is good. He's worthy to be praised. He's kept us one more time. I said he's kept us one more time. And we give God praise for being such a loving, a kind, and a gracious God. Could have been another way. Could have been reading our name this morning. But God saw fit to allow us to see yet another day. And not just any day, but the Lord's day. This is the day that we've come to give him praise. We give him praise every day, but we've come to worship him. We've come to adore him. We've come to experience the Lord's presence in this place. We've come to be transformed. We've come to be renewed. We've come to be encouraged. And the only way we can do that is with God. So we give God praise this morning. We give God praise. We give God praise. We thank God for allowing us the opportunity to praise him. You don't know like I know what the Lord's done for me. And if you had that testimony, you ought to give God praise one more time. Just thinking about what God has done for you. Think about how God has brought you through many dangers, toils, and snares. Thinking about how you were at the end of your road at times, at the end of your rope, as some folks would say. Thinking Wondering how you were going to make it, but God saw you through, clothed you in your right mind, and continued to help you along the way. God is a good God. I said, God is a good God, and he's worthy to be praised. That's why I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Better than a thousand. In his way, huh? yeah. Because of the house of the Lord, our God, I will seek thy good. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house, Lord. I have loved the habitation, thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. Amen. This, this next part always gets me as I thought about um, we as we process from the church yesterday and, and the home going of our dear departed brother, Brother James Edward Herring. Uh, we were leaving the church on our way to the cemetery to put his body at rest. Uh, but in the midst of our movement to the cemetery from the church it was a little ways it was from woodbridge to alexandria that was a lot of traffic weaving in and out uh, people were just not honoring what we know to be a sacred space of the movement of a funeral procession basically when you're moving the body to the cemetery and it was all that i could do as i said lord let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight oh lord my strength and redeemer Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. 
make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All the earth sing praises. We're going to be blessed with a hymn of praise, a song of praise. It, it can be a, uh, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord if you can. It, it can be a contemporary Christian song. It can be a gospel song. It, can, it There's so much that God can do through song. We, we, we wait on Sister Sonia to bless us with a with a song, whatever it is, but we're gonna be we're gonna relish it, whatever it is. We're gonna praise God like we've lost our minds, knowing how good he is. Uh, and we thank God just for continuing to keep us. Come on, Sister Sonia. Oh, come on, clap your hands. Come on. Uh -oh, Come on, stand to your feet. Come on, let's give God some praise. Come on. <laughs> He's a wonder. Yes, he is. You ought to give him praise. And you know what? I got him. He's a wonder and I got him. I've seen him heal the sick. I've seen him raise the dead. He's a wonder. And I got him down in my soul. Hallelujah. 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 We thank God for that hymn of praise. We thank God for that hymn of praise. 
We thank God for that hymn of praise. I'm going to ask my loving wife, the first lady of Living Water Amy Church, to come now and keep us at the throne of grace. Why? Because he's a wonder in my soul. Come on, baby. Good morning, church. Let's bow our heads as we pray to this wonderful, wondrous God. He is a wonder, as the songwriter said. And he is a wonder in sickness and in health. He is a wonder when you're rich or you're poor. He is a wonder when you have what you want and when you don't. God, when we can see it and when we can't, you're still a wonder, God. Yeah. And God, I, help, I ask that you just help us, God, to see your full wonder, God, even when we don't feel it, God, even when we can't Think it, God. Even when we don't imagine it, God, your wonder is so much bigger than ours, God. Help us to take the limits off of our thinking, God, and put it to where it could be with you, God. Help us to feel this place, God, the little church by the road, God, because you can do that, God. Just help us to take the blinders off, and God, and to bask in your wonder. God, help us to unite as a church. God, help us to continue to praise you and give you the honor and unity, God. And just see what you can do, God. I just thank you, God, for being God, God, and that you're not limited by anything that we as humans can see, think, or feel, God. I just thank you, God, that you sit high and you look low and you can see all of it, God. God, I just thank you, God, that you'll continue to bless the members of Living Water AME Church, those who have gone through some tough times, God, that you will stop by and see about them. Those who have lost loved ones, God, that are traveling on the highways and byways yeah. that may have issues within their body, God. I ask that you just stop by and just give them a touch of your Holy Spirit, God, if they can continue to run on, God. I just thank you, God, for what you're going to do in the Living Water AME Church body, God, in the life of this church, God, that we will touch millions across the world, God. I just ask you for the increase, God. And that increase starts with us, God, that yeah. we will increase our faith, that we will increase our thinking, God, that we yeah. will increase our tithe, God, that we will do what you've called us to do. God, we just thank you and we bless you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I, I was thinking during the prayer how God has done a wonder in my life and there were days I didn't know what I was going to eat. Days when sardines were the meal of the day. Peanut butter. And oodles of noodles. <laughs> Amen. Somebody has that testimony. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. But God provided for me. Even in the midst of those days of struggle, he was a wonder. And so that song just resonated in my soul as it played. And I thank Sister Hope for the prayer. Uh, I, I, I almost felt like a part of the Mississippi Mass Choir, amen, for a moment. But then when I started to think about all that God had done in my life and, and what the psalmist was saying as a choir song, I was so glad inside to know this God that we serve. So glad to be able to hold and to call on his name in the midst of storms in the midst of trouble god is good and god is a wonder we want to continue to keep sister mary in prayer uh as she goes through bereavement if and, and it, although we celebrated the life of brother james and it was a rich life uh you know we we celebrate knowing that this is the beginning for him. He, he's gone on to glory and he has eternity with the Lord. But those of us who are left behind, especially Sister Mary and her family, they are going to miss his presence. So we want to continue to keep them prayed up. We want to continue to pray for them, their strength in the Lord, pray for their comfort. There are going to be days that they go through where they just miss Brother James. So we want to continue to pray for them as they as, and pray for one another as we all deal with this great loss here at Living Water Amy Church. And then we want to pray for Brother Carl and Sister Emma as they travel to bury their uh, niece's husband. 
Uh, and so we want to keep them lifted in prayer as well. We want to keep Mother Sanderson. I did see Mother Sanderson yesterday at the home going service, but we want to keep her lifted in prayer. She's due to have some surgery on her eyes. And so we pray that the surgery goes well and that she continues to have sight to see the goodness of the Lord. We pray for all of those. We want to keep Sister Nita in prayer as well. She was on her way or coming to church and had a rough night. Uh, last night and, and with some family issues she's dealing with, continue to keep her in prayer, as well as Sister Rita. Sister Rita and Dr. Harold are on their way down to her mother's home place on the Tidewater area, so keep them in prayer for traveling mercies as they go. Keep them in prayer as they have to deal with the issues that they deal with in this day. Keep each other lifted in prayer, knowing that God does answer prayer. I said he's a wonder and he answers prayer. He's dependable. He's one, the one we can depend on, the one we can hold fast to in the time of trouble, the one who saves us, literally saves our souls. So it, 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 that's the kind of God we serve. As Sister Betty comes now to do the announcement, just continue to remember, the welcome and announcements, continue to remember who our God is. We serve a mighty God. A mighty, mighty, mighty God. And he's a wonder. A wonder down in our souls. Come on, Sister Betty. Bless you. Good to see you. Good morning, church. Thank you all for coming in today. And welcome once again to Living What I Am, you church. And for all those online on Zoom as well, we welcome you this morning. We thank God for his blessings and his grace upon us that we were able to come in and glorify his name. These are announcements for this morning. Please get out to vote and encourage others to do the same. You can vote early or by mail in your ballot. If you want to be socially engaged in what's going on in the Stafford County, and Virginia, then join the Living Water AME Social Action Committee as we work with the AME Connection to encourage voters registration and conduct our souls to the polls here in the Stafford County. Also renew your Stafford County NAACP membership today by visiting the NAACP website. Please note that we will not have our triumphant Tuesday topic discussion this week at 7 p.m., but please join us for Wednesday prayer at 1 p.m., as well as for church school each Sunday. And now for our October birthdays, we have Sister Debra Rivers, whose birthday is coming up on October 21st. And also we have Sister Chandra Redfin, whose birthday is also coming up the next day, no, on the 20, October 24th. <laughs> so these are our birthdays for the month. So pray for them as they look forward to celebrating their birthdays. Thank you and God bless you all. Amen. Come on, give her a hand clap of praise. Thank you for our announcements. Uh, we are grateful to God for allowing us uh, all that we share in the way of announcements here as through the work of ministry here at Living Water Emmy Church. Uh, the Social Action Committee is important. Not only is it important in this season of voting uh, as we encourage others to vote. L listen to me and listen to me carefully. I, it's not just you need to be registered to vote. It's not just that you need to go out and vote. You need to encourage others to vote. There's some folk who have lost the understanding and the history of the vote, how hard it was for our community in particular to vote. People died so that we can vote. I know we get disillusioned about party, this party, that party, this, this particular candidate and that candidate and what they stand for. Your vote is your voice. People literally died for you to vote. That was That's still going on to this very day, a lot of voter suppression. So that tells you that your vote is important. Not only should you vote, you should encourage others to vote. If you don't know the story of our community and the struggle to vote, look it up. I'll share it with you. 
and look it up and share it with someone else and let them know that their vote is important. Let them know to get out to the polls and vote. And then if they want to have a discussion on candidates, and y'all can have that discussion as well. But the important thing is that they vote, that they let their voice be heard. Amen? Amen. We thank God for Sister Betty and the announcements that were shared. I want to thank God for everyone who's joining us virtually this morning. I see you out there. We thank God for you as well. Uh, we just want to continue to uh, lift up the name of Jesus as we go about our service today. Uh, and one important way to, in lifting up the name of Jesus really is through our tithing off. <laughs> Amen. I, I knew I won't get a lot of amens for that, but let me explain to you what I mean. God has literally given you everything. That air, that breath you just took, God gave it to you. Don't you know that God has the whole world in his hand? He has you in his hand. Everything that you have, God gave to you. That includes your time, your lifespan. It includes your uh, treasure. It includes everything about you, the talents that you have. God gave those to you. you. You wouldn't even be here if it weren't for God. So at this time, we take the opportunity to give back to our treasure, back to God's church. This is important. It's important so that we can continue to serve this community, so that we can continue to partner with Moncure Elementary School and those children who are in need, so that we can continue to partner with the Axe Shelter for folk who are going through uh, some, some sheltering challenges, amen, so that we can continue to do reading programs, so that we can continue to put give clothing and food to folk uh, who need our help. So giving in this point of time is a way of celebrating Jesus and what Jesus ministry means. So we thank God for your giving. You can give one of five ways. You can give via uh, PayPal. You can give via Givelify. You can give via Cash App. You can give via uh, Zelle. Or you can give via the United States Postal Service. Any way you choose to give. If you're out there online, please hear me clearly. Any way you choose to give, you can give. You're in the sanctuary. You know how to give. We thank God for your giving. And I know that uh, we would normally do this. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own. We have given thee. That's going to be it today. Amen. Let us pray over the offering. God, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus for those who had a heart to give. Giving is about relationship. Giving is about knowing the God that we serve and giving back to him freely, willingly, cheerfully. So God, we thank you for loving a cheerful giver. We thank you for blessing God that when we give, you pour back into us. 30, 60, 100 fold. And we thank you for all those who continue to give to support Living Water Amy Church so that we can go out and let a dying world know that Jesus lives. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen, amen, and amen again. We thank God for your giving. We thank God for allowing us the opportunity to give. And we thank God for all that God continues to do in the life of his church. Let me say that again. In the life of his church. At this time, I'm going to ask my son, Gilbert A. Ruffin, the third, amen, let me make that clear. He is the third to come to read our scripture today uh, as he comes. Come on, give God another hand clap of praise. <laughs> All right. Isn't he sharp today? Praise the Lord. <laughs> come on, give God. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Oh, my. Please stand on your feet as we read John chapter 16, verse 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if any of you want to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross, and follow me. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs> we thank God for the reading of the scripture. Amen. We thank God for God's word. And we certainly thank young Gilbert for reading our scripture today. After the sermonic selection, we're going to wait on the Lord to speak to us, to encourage us, and to draw those who are meant to be drawn this day. Only God can do it. Pray for this preacher, but pray that the God that we serve will show up, speak, and do a new thing today. As I preach from this sermonic selection, 
or, or selection from the Somalic topic, confession and commitment. Confession and commitment. Come on, Sister Sean. I want y'all to help us do it. Lift your hands in this atmosphere and say, I am grateful. I am grateful for, for the things that you have done. have done. Look at him and tell him, yes, yes I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the victories the that we've won. we won. Tell him, I could go on and on. I About your works. About your words. Because I'm grateful. Because I'm grateful, grateful, so grateful just to praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Lift your hands and say, flowing from my heart.
I am grateful. Hallelujah. You ought to be grateful. Come on, stand on your feet and give God praise mm -hmm. if you know you're grateful. Give him praise if you know you're grateful. You have a lot to be grateful for this man. You ought to know that you know that you know that you have a lot to be grateful for this man. God is good to us. I said God is good to us. And God has saw us through to another day. Come on, lift up holy hands and repeat this song. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Now, come on, bless him one more time. Come on, bless him like you know that you know that he's your light and your salvation, that he's your strength in your moments of weakness, and that he'll keep you and guide you through every season of life. In the name of Jesus, thank you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'm going to try not to be before you long today. Um, we have this important message that God has shared uh, here as God talks about and shares with us through the text uh, what it means, truly what it means, your confession of Christ, what it truly means, uh, and how your confession and your commitment are to align. That's what God is sharing with us today. God is saying, when you confess me, that you ought to be committed to. You ought to be committed to the works that I've done. You ought to be committed to the things you've seen me do. You ought to be committed to the word that you've read and live out the life of your confession. That's what God is telling us today. God is telling us that, it, that, that you must continue to walk what you talk. You must, if you confess it, you ought to live it. You ought to be an example of it for folk to see. That's why he says that you are the light of the world. That's why he says to you that you are the salt of the earth. Your life must be evidence of what you confess. It would be very hypocritical of any one of us to say and confess Jesus as Lord and Savior and then go out and live like it's me, myself, and I. Don't go out and do what Jesus did. Wouldn't it be hypercritical or critical for you to go out and, and you say, well, I confess Jesus is Lord. He's the Lord over my life. You come in here, we wave hands, we shout, we dance, and then you go right outside of these walls and treat someone indifferent. You, you don't give them and show them the love that God has shown you. He's a good God. Uh, Bishop Hezekiah Walker said it best. He said we should be grateful for what God has done. And when we're grateful for what God has done, we serve God. We serve God knowing that he is a wonder. We serve God knowing that he's a mighty, mighty, mighty good God to us. All you have to do is think about what God has done in your life. And you ought to be committed to the confession that you made with your mouth. And that's what John, Jesus literally is saying in John's gospel. Jesus is saying to his disciples, he said it, he made it plain. If you want to follow me, what's that? In, Ma no, in John's gospel, um, Matthew's gospel. Is that what you, Matthew 16. It, Matthew 16, thank you, son. I, I am, I apologize. I have a misprint here, but I should, I should know what I'm preaching from, but thank you so very much. In Matthew's gospel, thank you so very much for the correction because uh, I wrote it and that's what God gave me, so I should know it. Thank you, son. I pre in Matthew's gospel, Jesus says, by the way, he says it. He also says this in the other gospels too. He says it in Luke as well, uh, but not in John. So we thank you. We thank you. But our focus to text, the, the text today is from John's gospel. I'm sorry, it's the Matthew's gospel, chapter 16, verse 24. And Jesus says to his disciples, he's saying to us today, if you want to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross and follow me. Let me say that again, because he gives us three conditions of commitment. Don't you know being someone, to follow someone means you need to be committed to them? If you want to follow me, give up your own way. In other words, give, don't be selfish. Give up your selfishness. Follow me. 
take up your cross, follow me. And then finally he re reiterates the point, follow me. And that's what we want to talk about this morning. You know, confessing Jesus is about relationship. When you confess him as Lord and Savior, you're confessing a relationship with Christ. It, the relationship is an undying love and faith in Jesus and receiving all that he has, the undying love for you, receiving the grace that he has for you, that God has for you, receiving mercy for you. It's about receiving what God has for you and then giving back unto God everything God gives to you. It, it's about relationship. Let me, let me see if I can. The Bible says that Christ is to the church. He's the bridegroom. Isn't that what it said? And the church is his bride. So the relationship that we have with Christ is one like a marital bond. Is it not? That, that's what the word says. It's a relationship. The church, that's you. He's the bridegroom. We're the bride. So we have a bond. We have a relationship in a marriage. There's a commitment that must play, take place. There's a commitment that takes place. What kind of husband would I be if I, if I confessed my undying love for Sister Hope, First Lady Hope, which I did. I, I stood before God and, and gave a vow to love her. Sickness and health. She did the same thing. Whether I was poor, yeah, I was silent on that part, but she, uh, whether I was poor, <laughs> And, and she uh, she prayed, she, 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 she vowed and we vowed to honor one another, to love one another, do all things to love one another. What kind of husband would I be to say these words, this vow from my mouth, and then not be committed to them? What kind of husband would I be? The same thing applies in your relationship with Christ. This confession with Christ means commitment. It, it's a relation. It's about relationship. That's why Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. It's about relationship. I've heard it a couple of times this week. I heard it at my son's friends, Jalen, uh, Jalen Robinson's home going. That's exactly what the preacher said. It's about relationship. As a matter of fact, when he opened the doors of the church, he talked all about relationship. I heard it yesterday when we, at the home going of Brother James, it's, it's about relationship. And, and today, God wants us to know that it's about relationship. God wants you to know that when you confess him, that you are also committing to him. You're committing your life to him. He's giving you everything. And you... And I must be committed. Our life's actions must show our commitment. They must be a reflection of God so that others might be drawn to this God that we serve. Am I right about it? Uh, somebody ought to holler back at me then, amen. It means a life of commitment through your life actions. Today we see uh, those who say that they are Christians. They, they, we see some folk in our own society they, they profess to be Christian, but but they they they'll say that uh, they'll rage against helping poor folk. They they'll rage against helping their neighbor. They they they'll look at them and because their the, the texture of their skin or the color of their skin may be different, they won't help. They'll they'll rage against it. They they'll rage against helping folk who are uh, uh migrating from other countries. Uh, out of fear, looking for a better way of life. They'll rage against them and talk about them dirty. They'll, they'll talk about them eating dogs and cats. They, they'll call them fabulous. They claim to be Christian. But when they have an opportunity to be committed to that which they should have confessed, then they back away from it. They do the complete opposite of what they saw Jesus do. That's what they do. They'll say that these social programs, this is not a function of government. The government shouldn't take care of the people. Well, the last time I read, that's exactly what the government's supposed to do. It's the government of, by, and for the people. 
Are we the people? Then why is it that when we're in need, our, our community, all you have to do is look outside of these four walls. Our community is in need. But every time the government tries to support our community, we can't do that. This is unfair to me. If you support them, then you're being unfair to me. These are the people in need. You have what you need. But when you attempt to, the government attempts or people attempt to help them, then you complain. You're, you're not committed. You're not committed to that, to that which you confess. You confess Jesus as Lord, but yet and still, you live something completely different. They'll say they're given to those in need and, and those who have suffered and continue to uh, suffer, trying to give them equal footing under the law is unfair to me. Any fool with two eyes can see that being equal under the law means you gotta have some money in this country. You better have some money to get legal representation to make you equal under the law. That, that's how this country works. And so they, they'll take something that's good, something that's meant for to be positive and the, something that has moralistic value, something that is scriptural even, and they'll claim that it's turned, they'll turn it on his head saying it's a bad idea. It, it's terrible, it's, it's unfair to me. And they'll use the law, they'll twist the law to try to make it uneven again. And so we see that praying out in our society. In other words, they'll confess one thing and do something completely different. And where I'm from, plain and simple, that's called a lie. It's called lying. That there's no alternative truth. It's a lie. It's a lie to confess one thing and do something completely opposite to it. It's a lie from the pit of hell. That's what it is. It's a lie. And they allow themselves to live a lie and then look you in the face as a fellow Christian and expect you to accept the lie. Let me try to explain this another way that, that so we can get it. I know that's plain and simple, uh, but another way to view this is that when you see someone in need, because I don't want to just pretend that it's others, it's the other. When you see someone in need, in your daily travel and you're ignoring them, you're ignoring them because it's going to impact on your time. You're ignoring them because it's going to impact on your personal lifestyle. You're ignoring them and I'm ignoring them even because of our personal thoughts of how they should be living. It's their fault that they're out here, baby. It's their fault because I can see that he has alcohol or he smells like weed. You, you'll teach them. The last time I checked, the Bible says, judge not least you be judged. It says, don't worry about the speck in someone else's eye when you got a beam in yours. God is clear. So when you ignore them and ignore their need, you, 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 you judge them. In other words, in your own selfishness, you ignore their need. Then you too are not living your confession of faith. Let me see if I can put a bow on it right here to make this point. We can't just confess Jesus with our mouths and not be committed to following Jesus in our living and with our lives. That's what Jesus is saying in the text. He's saying, if you want to follow me, there's a cost. You see, we get this twisted. Confession is free. It, it, God's mercy is free. God's grace unto us is free. Confessing with our mouths and believing in our hearts that Jesus, God raised him from us, that's free. That's the easy part. That's the beginning of the relationship. That's the vow. You say yes. Commitment is another thing. Commitment costs something. Jesus is clearly telling us in the text, it costs something. He's telling us, if you want to be my follower, you got to give up some stuff. He's telling us, if you want to be my follower, 
you got to take some action. You got to take up your cross. He's telling us, if you want to be my follower, then you got to be my follower. It means that you got to do something. It's going to cost something. And so Jesus came to save, but he's coming back to judge. That, that's what the scriptures tell us. So we need to be mindful of that. Now, here it is. Jesus came to save and he's coming back to judge. But the Bible says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, I said, whosoever believes in him will not perish and have eternal life. God sent his only son into the world, not to judge the world. This is the first coming, but to save it through him. The entire world has the opportunity to be saved through Christ. It's a confession and it's free. All they have to do is confess and believe. That's what the word says. Our only job in the confession is to do what? Believe. That's all you have to do. Didn't say anything else. Just believe. That's what the word says. And, that, and, 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 and so when we believe, that's how we get salvation. Salvation comes through confession. There's no judgment against those anyone who believes in him. But anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing. That's scripture. That's what it says. Judgment is based on this fact. This is what God says to us in scripture. God's light came into the world. But people love darkness more than light for their actions were evil. I said their actions were evil. All who did evil hate the light. Anyone who does evil and is living in sin, they hate something that's going to expose them. They hate the light so others can see what they're doing. But if you want to live right, those who come to the light, those who come to the light and do what? Are committed by their lives. The light shows what they, how they're living. The light shows how they're living and the light shows others how to live through commitment to God. And what is it that God wants? What, what is it that God wants from us? God wants your confession to align with your commitment. That's what God wants from you. God wants your what you say to align with how you live. And, and, and so that's what God wants from us. God wants you, your commitment and your commitment is what? To be a follower of Jesus Christ. This word follower uh, is also meant to be a disciple of Christ. That's what it means. All of us who confess Jesus are called to be disciples of Christ. That's why the Bible says all are called, but few are chosen. Because everyone is not going to follow him until they die. They're not going to do it. <laughs> Why? Because they got some selfish ways. Why? Because they refuse to pick up their cross and follow him. Why? Because they refuse to follow him. Simply. They say one thing and do another. Jesus says in Matthew's gospel, thank you, son. This is how to line up your confession with your commitment. He says this first condition of commitment through fellowship to him is to turn from your selfish ways. Or give up your own way, as it says in the New Living Translation. Jesus is telling us to have humility and compassion for others. Have humility and compassion in learning. We, we got to learn this to place others before ourselves, before oneself, right? We learn this even as children. When we come out of the womb, we're selfish. Why? Because we're born into sin. Try taking something from a child. Don't get upset. It's natural. It's a natural physical response because their flesh tells them they want what they want. Your flesh tells you today you want what you want. That, that's what your flesh does. But God says you have to turn from yourself. You've got to turn from your selfish ways. You've got to lay aside something and follow me. In other words, you got to love others like you love yourself. That's what turning from your selfish ways means. That's what turning from your own way. You've got to put people before you put yourself. 
Isn't that what Jesus did? What's the commandment that he gave us? To love one another. He called us to love one another. If we love one another, then we will put our others before ourselves. We'll love on others like we love ourselves. And I don't know about you, but I love me some me. I love me some me, but I want to love my neighbor like I love myself. I want to love them. But why? Because that's what Jesus calls us to do. That's his command to us. So we must put others before ourselves. We, we've got to give up our own way. Our own way of thinking about things in the natural. Our own way of, of, of hoarding things in the natural. L listen, this is not an easy thing that Jesus is saying to us today. It's countercultural. Everything in our society says me, myself, and I. Everything in our society says, look, get married, have two kids. At least it used to be that way. Have two kids, get your house and have a picket fence. And there's nothing wrong with that. The problem is you've got to go beyond that. You, 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 it can't just be about you succeeding. It can't just be about you and your children succeeding. It has to be about the community succeeding. And those around you, what good would it do? Well, how would it profit us, profit us to gain the whole world and lose our soul? What good would it do to raise our children to be right and the world around them in which we send them out in to is lost? They're going to be in trouble. We've got to be willing to give up our own way in order to love others and show them the way, the truth, and the light which lives in us through Christ Jesus. Let God, let God, let God's will be your will. Let, let, let God's will be your goal, not your own desires. God's will, I, I've learned, I've lived long enough to know that when I do things God's way, God blesses me. I, I, I believe some of you in here have lived long enough to know that when you do things God's way, God blesses you in ways seen and unseen. But when I try to do things my own way, when I try to do things in accordance with my own will, that's when things go get messy. They get messy. So we have to learn this. This is a learned trait. I said from the moment we come out of the womb, we have a selfishness to ourselves. Kids will, they, they don't freely share with one another. They will snatch a toy and look at the other kid and bite him and smack him. It ain't just kids. Some of us are living like that today. Well, we want what we want and we're not willing to share it with anyone else. We, we have our own way. We, we, we're about our own will. God wants our will to align with his. This is our commitment. This is our confession. When we confess Christ, we commit to following Christ. We commit to following God's will for our lives. That's what we're doing when we confess. Christ, the way of Christ is countercultural. Now, Peter, learn this lesson firsthand. Just read the scripture, read the text. Read the preceding text. This is what leads up to Jesus saying, look, if you want to be my follower, this is what you got to do. Look, look at what happens. And, and Peter, and Jesus asks, who do people say I am? In the preceding text, who do they say I am? Then he says, who do you say I am? Who, who, who do you say I am, Sister Hope? Who, who do you say I am, Brother Justin? Who do you say, Sister Sonia, Mother Burger, Sister Betty, Brother G Who do you say I am? Peter confesses, you are the Messiah. Jesus says, flesh and blood didn't reveal it to you. You couldn't have known this in yourself. God revealed it to you. Don't you know that one day, after a boat experience, I confessed it. It wasn't flesh and blood. I saw what he did in my life. I, 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 I saw how he healed my body in an, a blink of an eye. I don't know how long I was in that moment with him, but I saw him heal me. You had some type of experience with Jesus. You had some type of a uh, 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 relationship with him. Something happened in your life and you confess it. That's what Peter did. 
Peter confessed. And, and they were riding high. And, they, and then Jesus told them, I got to go to the cross. I got to suffer some things. They were shot down in May. They went from riding high to being shot down in May. And, and here's what it is. Here's the challenge. Peter said, no, Lord. Peter took it upon himself to rebuke Jesus. Why? Because he saw in his own human mind, in his own physicalness, that we don't, this can't happen to you. You are our leader. He was being selfish about what God sent Jesus here to do. Jesus, God's will was for Jesus to be born, to die, to suffer for us, to take on the sins of the world. That's God's will. Jesus is aligned with God's will. He's one with God. Peter is going counterculture to, God, to God's will. And so we, from time to time, that happens with us. We confess. Things are going well. Trouble comes along. That's what happens. We got to go through some things. And when we start going through some things, sometimes we fall away. Sometimes we question. Sometimes we try to figure it out on our own. It's not new. The Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. Read your scriptures, Old and New Testament. Every one of the prophets tried to figure it out on their own. Did not Abram and Sarah try to figure it out on their own? God told them what he was going to do. He gave them his will, and they tried to figure it out on their own. Did, did, not, did not David try to figure it out on his own? Thank you, Sister Sonia, for teaching it this morning. He, he tried to do some things on his own. He knew what God's will was for his life. Somebody had to come and tell him, you're not living the confession that you've made. You, you're living a lie. They had to give him an example of a story about a rich man and a poor man and a lamb for him to see it. And then he came to his senses. Wasn't before then. He was being selfish. He was, he, he walked in that sheep, but his flesh told him he had to have it. And he, and he took her and killed Nabal. Kill your right. Sorry. Kill your right. And, 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 and the priest, Nathan, came to him and told him, you're wrong. We sometimes go through this period after confession where we will stray out on our own. But our commitment over time has to align with God's will. The confession and the commitment have to be one. And this is what Peter is learning. Peter is learning as Jesus pulls, he pulls Jesus to the side and rebukes him, saying, no, this can't happen. And Jesus has to explain. Jesus says what? Get behind me, Satan. Now you are out of God's will. You, you, you're thinking selfishly for yourself. And, and, and now you're, 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 you're out of alignment. And so it, it was God's intent, purpose, and will in demonstrating his love for us. Why? Because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Jesus laying down his life. That's right, Mother Bird, you should talk about this. Jesus laying down his life demonstrates God's love for us. It also demonstrates what it means to turn from our selfish ways as we follow Jesus' example and lay down our lives for others. That's what Jesus did. He wept bitterly in the garden. He didn't want to be separated from God. Taking on your sins and mine meant that God could not look upon him. Meant that he had to be separated in that moment from God. Can you imagine how difficult that must have been? One, for God to send his only begotten son. Two, for Jesus to be separated from his father. They are one throughout eternity. And now in this moment of time, for our sake, he has to be separated. Why? Because he's doing God's will. And so Jesus demonstrates what it means to lay down his life. They didn't take his life. He laid it down for us. He laid it down for you. He laid it down for me so we could have relationship with God. So we could have a commitment to the relationship once again. Jesus demonstrates what it means for us to turn from our selfish ways as we follow his example and lay down our lives in commitment to others. Your confession has to align with your commitment. That's all God is trying to tell us today. It doesn't, if it doesn't, you're living a lie. 
and you don't want to live a lie. How will others see that you're doing what God wants if your confession doesn't align with your commitment? We've got to walk in the light. I heard the psalmist say it this way, walk in the light, the beautiful light, shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. Why by day and by night? Because some tricky things happen at night. Shine all around us by day and by night. Darkness can't hide your sins. God, God's light exposes your sin. So shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. By aligning our confession to our commitment and turning from our selfish way, God's not asking you to be perfect, but he is asking you to be committed, following Jesus' example. That's why Jesus tells them this next uh, condition of commitment to follow, to fellowship. I'm going to call it that. Not, not just discipleship, but he's saying, follow me, right? So to fellowship, he says, you've got to take up your cross. What does this mean? It, it's a call to follow Jesus even unto death. Maybe you don't know this, but it, it's called, it's a call to sacrifice your life, your very life to the call of Christ upon your life. God, I surrender all, all to Jesus. I surrender, I surrender all. That includes your life. It, 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 it's his when you say yes. To, to fully understand this level of commitment, We've got to understand what's happening in the preceding text and Jesus in his prediction of his death. If we look carefully, we'll see that Peter has confessed Jesus as the Messiah. We'll see that his confession of faith, uh, it, 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 Jesus says upon this rock, I will build my church. It's the confession of faith that God is building his church upon. That's why we're called Christians today because we follow Christ. We believe in Christ as the Messiah. We believe him to be God, right? And so it's upon this faith that we have at the church. That's why we're gathered as a church, as a community of believers. This is it's the confession. And, and, and disciples have now made this confession and understand that Jesus is Lord. They, they understand that. And Jesus tells them in the verse 20, in the preceding text, he tells them not to tell anyone that he's the Messiah. They, 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 they've confessed that he is Lord and Savior. And, and what we also need to understand is that the writer of Matthew's gospel is writing uh, this text. He's writing this text some 70 to 100 years after Jesus' death and resurrection. He has the benefit of hindsight. And, and so he can see, therefore, to take up one's cross is meant to be a living sacrifice, a life that we sacrifice to what we confess. Peter confessed Jesus as Lord and was committed unto death being crucified upside down. All the other disciples confessed Jesus as Lord and were committed even unto death, being slain in their commitment to the cause of Christ. The giving of one's life is presented as an act of testimony. That's what we need to understand to the bigger truth than oneself. <laughs> you all, this is going to get you. This, this is going if this don't get you something something wrong you know that there are some places in the world today and this is why we kind of miss this point there's some places in the world today that confession of Christ means you die literally mean you'll die and, and, and so we're in this culture where that may not be the case we, we have this freedom right freedom of religion right we have these freedoms in our constitution, right? And, and one of them is the freedom of religion and, and the Bill of Rights. We had a free, freedom to confess Jesus, really to confess anything, but to confess Jesus. So we, we have this freedom. So we're not going to be crucified like the Romans did the Christians, uh, like he, they did the disciples, if we confess Jesus. And, and, and But I don't want you to get it twisted. I don't want you to get it twisted because the, because this is what it means when you say you confess Jesus as Christ. That word for confession is the Greek word uh, materia, materia. And, and what that means is, as you can kind of hear it sounded out, it's martyrdom. That's what they're confessing. 
They're confessing their lives to be martyrs for Christ. So when you confess uh, that you Christ is Lord, you're, you're daily giving yourself away to the commitment of Christ. And so so you not only are you confessing your life to him, it can also mean that you're going to give yourself away over your lifetime. You're going to give yourself away in commitment to Christ. So confession is a big thing. Again, it's aligned and it's tied to your commitment to Christ. It's not just some words. It's your commitment, laying down your life. It is your commitment to give yourself away. I hear the psalmist saying, I give myself away. Isn't that what he says? I give myself away. As a matter of fact, when we were ordained, that's exactly what they played. I give myself away. It's a serious moment when you confess Christ. I know you feel good afterwards, but it's a serious moment of confession. It's a confession to commitment to lay down your life, your very life for Christ, to give yourself away to Christ and to serve him until you die. That's what, until he calls your name to the heavenly road. That's what you're committing to. That's what your confession is. So that's what we're doing when we confess. And our confession must be aligned to our commitment. And I, are you like those would-be disciples? You remember the 72. And you remember some who, some others who confessed that we know that you're God. Jesus, I know that you're Lord, but I got some stuff I got to take care of. I, I, I know that you're Lord, I would follow you, but you know I got to go bury my father. I, Jesus, I know that you're Lord, but I got some marital problems. I got to take care of my marriage first. Mm -mm. Jesus said, then you can't be my father. Matter of fact, Jesus says, don't put anything before me. N nothing before me. Not wife, not son, not daughter. Nothing comes before your relationship with me when you confess me as Lord and Savior. I'm not telling you some words. I'm telling you what's in the word. Your confession is your commitment. Jesus, I would, uh, I would commit my life to following you and to ministering to God's people, especially those in prison right here in Rappahannock Regional Jail. But, but my, my time is committed. I'm, I'm committed to my job. I, I'm committed to some me time. You know, I got to have a vacation. I, I'm committed to these other things, but I can't be committed to this thing. And, and yes, you do need a job. And yes, you do need some me time, but you ought to seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all the other things that you're seeking, the employment, the career, the me time will be added unto you. I know it sounds crazy, but it will be. Jesus, I will commit my time and efforts towards following you and ministering to the sick and shut in. But you know, um, my back hurts. I got my own problems. I, I, I got to deal with my own issues. I, I, I can't take the time to go visit the people up here in, what is this, this hospital, Stafford community? I, I can't. My leg hurt, my back hurt, my neck hurt. I, I, I can't do it. I got to worry about my own issues or my own sickness. Jesus, I, 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 would, I would go uh, commit myself to, to, to the alignment with my confession, but I've got my own issues to overcome. And I heard God say, as he did the moment you confessed, come as you are. Come as you are, and I'll give you rest. Come as you are. Lay down all your heavy burdens at the altar and I'll save your soul. Come as you are and I'll turn your life around. Come as you are and I'll transform your thinking. Come as you are and I'll give you a brand new heart. Not one of flesh, but one of spirit. Come as you are and I'll give you newness of life. That's why when you confess Jesus as Lord and Savior, you've got to give up your own selfish ways. You've got to pick up your cross. you got to pick up all of your mess, all of your challenges, and you got to follow him. That, that's what he's talking about. You've got to be willing to lay down your mess. you got to be willing to lay down your life. you got to be willing to lay down all of the challenges that you go through and still serve him.
and be committed to serving him until I die. That, that, that's, your, that's your song. I confess, and I've confessed to serve you till I die. I promise you that I will serve you till I die. That, that's, what, that's what you're saying to him. And, and I've seen God. When, when we're in alignment with our confession, I don't know about you, but, I, but I, I've seen God take what little that I have. And, and I've seen him multiply it to be a blessing to everything I'm connected to. I, I've seen some days when I only had those ramen noodles and peanut butter and crackers and, and sardines. I've seen those days when I only wanted to treat myself to death. I've seen those days when my mind was twisted and confused. But I also saw God took what I had and, and here I am today standing behind the sacred desk. Only God can do that. I don't know about you, but God can turn your life around. God can take what little you have and multiply. <laughs> I know you struggle with it, but God can do it. Only God can do these things. I I've seen God. I I've witnessed him save a suicidal man, a demon-possessed suicidal man, man out here. I've seen him make him brand new. I, I, I've seen the scriptures come alive before my very eyes and my mind couldn't comprehend it. I, I, I've seen it for myself. Somebody ought to help me preach it. I, I've seen God turn my life around when it seemed like I was bound for death, hell, and the grave. I, I've seen him take sickness in my body and, and mind and cast it out from me, healing me. And not only healing, but making me whole. I, I've seen him do some things. Maybe you've seen him do some things in your life. I know I'm not the only one. Somebody ought to throw their head back and shout hallelujah for the great things that God has done. I've seen him do some wonderful things. I've seen him do some marvelous things. I've seen him do signs, wonders, and miracles. I've seen him rescue me from some of the depths of, and some of the valleys of my life. And I'm talking about some low moments in life. I've seen him make me whole. I've seen him raise me up again from it when I thought I wouldn't make it, when there was no way of escape, when I knew I had all of the stuff that I had done had caught up, the decisions that I made, the consequences for those decisions had caught up with me. And, and there I was facing the consequences of my decision. I've seen God make a way out of nowhere. I've seen him give me a narrow escape just in the nick of time. I should have been dead and gone. I should be the one in Rappahannock Regional Jail or some other jail. But I've seen him turn it around. I, I, I've seen him. I, I've seen God rescue me from the depths. I've seen God heal my body. I've seen God clothe me in my right mind. I've seen God do these things. I should be cuckoo for Cocoa Pops. But God kept me. I said, Jesus kept me. Who wouldn't serve a God like this? Who wouldn't be committed to a God like this? Is that your testimony? I know I'm not the only one. Is that your story? When we said yes, I believe that you are Lord and Savior over my life. I believe that God raised you from the dead. We also committed ourselves to surrendering all to Jesus. This means our time. This means our talents. This means our treasure. Everything that you have, I say it during offering time, everything that you have, God gave it to you. Uh, Psalmist says, everything that's good, God did it. <laughs> everything that's good in your life, God did it. Left up to your own way and your own devices, you would be Ed Rappahannock Regional Jail crazy out of your mind. God did it. God kept. God provided the miracle in your life. And all God asks you to do is be a wise steward of what I've given you and to serve, to follow me. That's all he asks you to do. And so you see and, and you say, I surrender all. All to Jesus, I surrender. And let God be his will be your will. Let his plans, which are far above anything that you can think or imagine, let him lead your life. Let him guide you along the way. Serve him 
by living the example of Christ, let your confession align with your commitment. And this last condition, Jesus simply says, follow me. How hard can it be? He's making it plain. Just follow me. Follow the example that I've set for you. Follow me. This is the last condition that he tells us to fellowship. This is the last condition that he tells us about commitment, a life of commitment to the confession that we've made. And this condition, this condition is a matter of community. It's not about you. It's about what God wants to do through you. It's about how God wants to bless a greater community, how he wants to continue to save this dying world that he sent his only begotten son to save. It's about community. And so God says, he promises us that whatever you give up, remember he told the disciples this, I don't care what you've given up. He didn't say it that way. He said, look, be it property or family, Anything that you give up will be repaid to you 100 fold. And you'll inherit what? Eternal life. Anything that you give up, God will give it back to you 100 fold. All you have to do is be willing to give yourself away. And so we follow. And Jesus says, follow me and know that whatever troubles that come your way, I'll be by your side. Follow me. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Follow me and your life will never be the same. Follow me, and I'll do exceeding abundantly beyond anything that you could ask or think. Follow me, and I'll give you power. Holy Ghost power, follow me. Watch me work things out in your life. Watch me work things together for your good. Follow me, and watch me turn your children and your children's children life around for good. Follow me, and watch me Turn that spouse around. Follow me. And 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 I'll turn your sorrow into joy. And I'll give you peace in a time of storm and trouble. Follow me. And I'll give you what you need in your hour of mourning. Follow me. I'll give you what you need. Follow me. I'll give you peace that passes your own understanding. Follow me. And I'll turn your midnights into day. Follow me, I'll make your life brand new. Follow me, and I'll show you signs, wonders, and miracles. Follow me. Follow me when the closest, those closest to you hurt you deeply. Follow me. I'll be a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Follow me, and I'll cover you. I'll cover all your mess. I'll wash away all your sins. Follow me. Follow me and, 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 and know that I am God. Follow me and all of those broken pieces of your life, I'll put them back together. Just like Humpty Dumpty on the wall. I'll put you back together. I'll mend all your broken pieces. Follow me. And I'll continue to keep you on the potter's wheel. I'll continue to shape your life and make you whole. Follow me. I'll be with you in the time of trouble. I'll be your shelter in the time of trouble. Follow me, men. Every one of your broken pieces, follow me. Follow me. Follow me and know the truth. And I am truth. Follow me and know the way. There's no other way to the Father except by Jesus. Follow me and have life and have it more abundantly. Follow me and have eternal life. Maybe you don't know what I've said today. Maybe you don't understand what this confession is. I pray that I've made it plain for you. I pray that God has made it plain. Your confession is your commitment. Let the evidence of your commitment and the works that you do signify your commitment to the confession of faith that you've made. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, you and I must have confession and commitment. We must have confession and commitment. It's not just one or the other. It's both and. Confession and commitment. Because I read somewhere 
He's coming back again. And this time, he's coming to judge the quick and the dead. What is he going to judge them on? What they've done. He's going to judge them on their commitment to their confession. So we want to be written in the book, the Lamb's Book of Life, knowing that God has us in his hands. Let your confession be aligned to your commitment. To God be the glory for the great things that God has done and the three things that God continues to do by his word of faith today and forevermore. The doors of the church are open. The word has been preached. Is your confession today aligned with your commitment? It, it, it starts with relationship. The first thing is you, you have to make the confession. You, you have to, that's why the Bible says if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Remember that that is our confession of faith. That's the beginning of the relationship with God. And then once you've started this relationship, then you are promising to live a life of commitment to him. You're promising him to align your will with his will and to learn from his word and to grow in his word and to mature in faith and to draw closer to God every day of your life. Willing to lay down your life for him. It starts with that confession. And it doesn't stop there. The faith journey continues with commitment. Come on today and confess Jesus as Lord. Maybe you've never done it. But know the weight of your commitment. It's free. It's a free confession. But know that there is a commitment that follows it. Don't you want to know this God who saves to the utmost? Don't you want to know this God who gives us abundant and eternal life? Don't you want to know him for yourself? Come on today. Give your life to Christ. Won't you come today and trust him? Won't you come today and Pick up your cross and follow him. He'll be with you even until the ends of the earth. Come today and say yes, Lord, to your will. Yes, to your way. Confess him as Lord and Savior and commit to a life of fellowship. Maybe you've confessed the Lord, but you've com your commitment has waned. Maybe you've run into some struggles, some challenges in life, and, and, and you've kind of lost your way. Maybe you're like Peter, struggle to understand what God is doing. If that's you, come on today. Commit yourself and your life. Rededicate your faith and continue to walk with Christ. Maybe, maybe you've, you're committed. Maybe you've already confessed you're committed, but you don't have a church home somewhere where you're growing in faith. If that's you, come on today. Come on with all of these other broken pieces, these other stones, if you will that are striving to be like Jesus, striving in the commitment to serve not only one another, but a greater community and yea, even the world. If that's you, come on today, whether it's to confess Jesus as Lord, rededicate your faith or join the church, we're here for you. We're here for you and we're praying for you that you will make the confession and be committed to it. Come on, let's pray. God, we thank you, we bless you, and we praise you for the great things that you have done in this moment of time. We thank you for your word. We thank you, God, for being able to understand it even better. God, showing us that our confession and our commitment must align. We thank you, God, for those who will confess today and be committed to follow all the days of their lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, and amen again. Come on, give God praise. All right, I got to come on down. It's time for communion. For those of you who are online, please get your communion elements together and be ready. Amen. I see you all out there. Let me come on down. Come on up. Come on now. Scripture says in Matthew 721. Please come on, bro. Go closer. 
says, and not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Speaks about that. But he who does what? The will of my Father who is in heaven. The bidding goes this way. You, you, you that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins, Lord, in love and charity with your neighbor, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw not near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. We just kneel in our name. I know this war is hard, but even in the, if, if you choose, you can. But if, if I want you to be neutral and humble and make your confession prior to uh, taking from so This is the general confession. Almighty God, and we say this together, come on. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things. Judge of all people, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, broken most justly your wrath and indignation towards us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorrow for these our mistakes. The remembrance of them is grievous. Have mercy. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever at, hereafter serve and please you in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This is the prayer of humiliation. We do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercy. We are not worthy so much as to gather the crumbs under your table, for you are the same in Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, to eat so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink of his blood, that our sinful souls and bodies may be made clean by his death and washed through his blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your tender mercy did give your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his oblation of himself once offered full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sin of the whole world, and then institute in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that, his precious death, to his coming again. Hear us, O Lord, our merciful Father. We most humbly beseech you and grant that we receiving these creatures of bread and wine according to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution and remembrance of his death and passion may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given that, broke it. And gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after the supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink all of it, for it is my blood. This is my blood of the New Testament which is shared for you and many for the remissions of sin. Do this as often as you shall drink in remembrance of me. Amen. Lord, I take my hand this your Lord. This your body in remembrance of you, one that was broken for my sins. I want to take your cup, dignify your blood, which is sharing out with the action of my sins.
of baking of bread, which represents the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given to preserve your soul and body to everlasting. Representing the Bible of Christ. Likewise, take the cup, which represents the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shared to preserve for you, to preserve your soul and body to everlasting life. Drink this to your members, that Christ's blood was shared for you, and be thankful. Let's recite the Lord's Prayer. Okay. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, your kingdom come. Will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us a stay there, our daily bread. Give us our trespasses, we can be forgiven. Trespasses and sins. We will not have the temptation, but deliver us from the evil. The time is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, we can be able to keep you from falling flat on your face and to present you faultless before this world. With exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Amen. Hug your neighbor and we'll go in peace. Amen.